Hi there booktube! Today I'm here with a more positive video and I'm wrapping up my 2019. My previous video was all about my worst disappointments and this one is about the best books and the most surprising books that I read in 2019. Fortunately, I have five titles on this list and without further ado, let me get right into the titles. So the very first one book that popped up to my mind when I was thinking about this list is Nevermore and it's the first book in a trilogy or a series about a young girl who was supposed to die at her 11th birthday and she is like cursed with uh, the highest uh, kick of unluck in history so wherever she goes everything gets destroyed or ruined or stuff like that so everyone thinks that she's jinxed and cursed and she has to die by her 11th birthday but when the birthday arrives she is like whisked away by this strange man who brings her to this different like parallel kind of world and she discovers that uh, she has a talent, that she may take part in a trial and it's a magical middle grade book with lovely illustrations and just an amazing and fresh and funny story. So I really, really enjoyed that book. It made me smile, it uh, was adventurous, so I had the desire to go on and I bought already the second volume that I have to read, I hope, this year. The second book, I listened to it in an audiobook form and it was Daisy John and the Six. This was such, such, such a great experience as an audiobook. I will forever suggest it to you to listen to this book instead of reading to it if you can, because it has a full cast of characters and it's written in the form of an interview, so it's really amazing as an audiobook, it's a perfect format for it. And this is the story of an imaginary band, Daisy Jones and the Six. So we have this singer, Daisy Jones and the Six, who is a band, and they, at a certain point, their company decide to put them together to create the most amazing music ever in the 60s, 70s, something like that. And uh, amazing they go to the top and then they split and this is a story of what happened and years after uh, who's who what everyone thinks about what happened and just the inside story of their lives uh, and it's lovely because you really can see that they are different almost real people because when they talk they don't recollect some things in the most like clear way and so you always they are guessing what's the truth who is lying who is probably just not remembering things well so it's very very realistic and i love taylor jackie reads i read her other book this year it's Evelyn hugo and i loved that one too and i think that the real strength of this author is that the characters about which she writes are so so almost like real people that you really feel the need like to google them up and see if they really existed because it's impossible that they were just invented they're not stereotypical they're never perfect and i just adore that book if you can listen to it the third one is the first one in the duology and again i hope to read the second one this year and it's straight the dreamer this is a book that's been around here on booktube since the day it was published and I really understand the hype. It has a unique concept, but the thing that really made me choose this book for this video is the way of writing. I'm a sucker for good writing. I really can go through almost any kind of book if it's written in a certain way, in a lyrical and almost melodious, let's say like that way, when it seems more like a song and a melody and you have all of those figures of speech, I adore that kind of rich, lush kind of writing. So if you're not a fan of that, then probably you will not enjoy this book, but if you are, you probably will love it. And I hope that I will enjoy still the second one because 
The first one ended up on a very interesting moment and I really want to see what will happen next and I loved it more than the story, the way of writing, so I believe that I will read more about, written about this author because if this is the way she writes always, I want to read everything else. Next one is a non-fiction book and I have a full review for this book, if you are interested I will leave a link down below, go and check it out, and it's Why We Sleep. If you have to pick one non-fiction book this year, I would really suggest you to pick that one. I listened to it as an audiobook and it was just the tiniest bit difficult because you really have to stay focused being it a non-fiction and this book, as you may see from the title, deals with the matter of sleep, dreams, what happens during the night, why we sleep, how we sleep, how we may improve our sleep and it's written by a PhD, so it's very insightful without being boring and that's very important when you're listening to a non-fiction dealing with something scientific and here we have science, we have real facts, but they are never never boring and I loved it it was so important and I really started reconsidering how I look and consider my sleeping schedule. I know that it's very messy and I'm trying to do my best to make it as regular as possible because it is so important for your body and we never ever understand it fully and this book is just perfect to get your mind of it and to start really thinking about how you sleep and how you may improve it. So, so, so important. So, listen to that book, I highly recommend it. And the last one is a book in Italian that has been translated probably in English and in Spanish or something like that, I hope so. In Italian it's Notti in bianco e baci a colazione. This is a tiny little book, I listened to it as an audiobook and it's a book written by a father who has three, three daughters and the youngest is probably like two years old and the eldest is eight years old and they are funny and he just describes his everyday life because his wife works and he mostly stays at home with the three daughters because she works from home and so he describes all these everyday hilarious things that happen to him what happens in the town in which he lives and what happens in the house when he's with his daughters, the funny things they tell and do and how he really really loves them and his life and sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle, it's stressful and he's tired but then it's so heartwarming to listen to how he speaks about his daughters, how he deeply cares about them and his wife. It was just, I don't know, I love the experience of reading that book. It was so cozy and warming and I just well, laughed out loud multiple times while listening to it. It was just perfect. I don't know, I, I really love the experience of reading it. So these are the five books that I would define as my favorites of 2019 and as most surprising in some ways. I wouldn't have expected to have a non-fiction here or to have a book that has an interesting like synopsis but the most amazing thing is the writing. I wasn't expecting to have here a middle grade book so a lot of unexpected things but I believe that they are worth it and if you've read any of those please let me know down below or if you want to read those in the future again let me know. And what are your favorite reads of 2019? And most of all, what are the most surprising reads? Because maybe we have some books that we are expecting to love because they're like the most popular ones and everyone hypes them up and they're amazing. But what are those that really surprised you that little one knows about? Or I don't know, just that surprised you. Let me know and this is it for this video. I hope to see you very very soon and uh, we just have one more video to definitely wrap up 
2019 and it's my check with 2019 goals. So that video is coming very, very soon. And until then, bye! Ciao!